There are roughly 250,000 lakes in Ontario, Canada. This is the largest one wholly contained within the province. But with its size comes a notorious reputation. The lake is feared by boaters and paddlers alike for its penchant for violence. Winds exploit its monstrous size. It can transform a pleasure cruise into a horror. Most of the lake is remote, and the fish and wildlife here are something out of fiction. A year ago, I spent a week paddling at South End and only covered a fraction of the lake. It was a trip that begged for more. This time, Aaron and I are attempting to paddle around the entire thing. The question is, will Mother let us play? This is the Alexander Dam, one of three on the Nipigon River, holding back the lake we're about to paddle. A humbling perspective on her sheer scale, with this river providing the largest tributary to the largest lake on Earth. This is the longest trip we've attempted, and conversation is fairly minimal as we load our 17-foot prospector canoe and go through mental checklists. Despite the lack of whitewater or portages, we know it won't be a cakewalk, and there are a few pre-trip jitters. To complete the trip will require a couple hundred thousand paddle strokes from each of us. But for now, it's one stroke at a time. Well, we're well underway here, and the anxiety that comes with starting a multi-week trip is fading away. So much prep and planning and food prep. We've got 120 plus meals in our, in our food barrel there. There's a lot that goes into it, and you just fear that something's gonna go wrong, you'll forget something, and that's all melting away now as we're on the water. And we're approaching the first point of interest on this trip. Big, beautiful prominence called Otter Head. Just a perfect start to our trip here, coming around Otter Head, and conditions are going to allow us to cross Three Mount Bay, which saves us going in there. We can do a five kilometer crossing across, which is a lot, but yeah, great conditions, even a little tailwind for the sail. Perfect start to our trip, and we better make hay while the sun shines because the weather in the long term forecast looks pretty dubious with wind and thunderstorms, and this is a lake that's notorious for it to begin with, so we're going to give her. All right, finish that big crossing. About five kilometers more, we'll be at our target campsite for the night, which is a beauty. All right, camp is in sight. Got camp set up right away. Sky's been kind of sketchy today. Got our nice big tent, very spacious for both of us. On this private secluded beach with this insane view. Fantastic. Camp number one of many. Rogies for night number one and a good start to our trip 20 plus kilometers for a 1 p.m. start pretty good 
Long way to go. Really looking forward to it. It's not a rush trip, but still, you don't want to start out a potentially 400 kilometer trip behind schedule. Mm -hmm. Well, those are flavorful. Jalapeno and green onion. Uh -huh. So it's nine o'clock. It was a bit of a scramble to get everything done this evening. Just, uh, yeah, pushed for this campsite. Really glad we're here. I was here last fall, just under a year ago, and had an amazing experience here. Got windbound, but it was a beautiful day and the waves were crashing in on the beach. A bear came by, but uh, it was a good encounter because it swam away, no issue. And then the Northern Lights came out and uh, that was actually just a warm up for the Northern Lights that were to come on that trip. So we're hopeful for those on this trip as well. The trip last year was just a week solo and I just dipped my toe in the water of this enormous lake really. So I knew I'd, I had to come back and I'm so glad that Aaron's able to come with me. It's gonna be an amazing trip. I'm glad too. Yeah. So here's a quick look at the map. We came today up from South Bay, around Otter Head, crossed Three Mount Bay, and came up to Smoke Point here on Dead Poplar Point. Last year I did the same, but I went around down into McIntyre Bay, all around here, and around and back. This time we're skipping McIntyre Bay because I've been there, going through here, and all around the lake should be around 400 kilometers. It's just a giant. What time is it? Ten after six. Nice. Good morning. Sun's coming up and we're getting some breakfast and tea on. Earl Grey this morning, and we've got a lot of granola this trip for breakfast, so it means we don't have to even get the fire going. And we just put some hot water, we boil water the night before, put it in the thermos, so we can have hot coffee or tea with our breakfast without the need for a fire. So we're scrambling to get out of here, we're expecting a strong wind today and it's already building. A lot of fetch here to build up a wind through the mouth of McIntyre Bay, which is what we want to cross as soon as possible. Once we get around here, we should be in the clear. But yeah, pretty nasty winds coming. We gotta get out of here. Good thing it's not any more chopped up here. I know. I just discovered a new feature on my sun shirt. A pony hole! <laughs> hey! <laughs> it does feel horse-like somehow. <laughs> it looks like a horse's tail. That's why it's called a ponytail. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> something new today. Yeah, every day. So it's actually very calm out here. That little point we were on was getting really chopped up and windy, but yeah, that's a relief because this next stretch is very exposed and rocky. And last time it got rough with two to three foot swell. So be happy not to do that again. We 
We're just getting ready to start our crossing here. It's about two kilometers and it seems like we're just in time as the fog's lifting for the first time this morning and we're getting our first view of the far shore. So it's nice and calm on this side and let's hope that holds up all the way across. And with conditions staying good, let me get my line in the water. Amazing walleye, pike, lake trout and brook trout fisheries here in Nipigon. McIntyre Bay on our left is where I saw the best northern light show of my life. John just spotted a log and we were joking because we always save like grasshoppers and butterflies and stuff. So he's like, floating log, let's get it. So we were like powering to it. And then all of a sudden it slapped its tail and it was a beaver. Yeah, huge <laughs> it was a beaver. Big beaver. I thought it was a log, <laughs> big log. I'd like to see that one again. Yeah. Where are your eyes open from? So we're coming around Grand Cape now. Beautiful spot, nice cliffs on this side and it's just as beautiful, if not more so, around the other side, which is as far as I got last year. Everything after that is gonna be new. As you can see, a lot of the area we've been paddling through today was burnt by a forest fire probably 15 years ago or so. Almost around the Cape, great scenery, somewhat obscured by forest fire haze, which is building. The fog burnt off this morning and then this haze came in. So according to our SATCOM forecast, we've got about two or three hours more of reasonable wind and then it's supposed to get pretty nasty. So we won't want to be off the water by then, ideally with camp set up. And it might be slim pickings. There's nothing marked on our map and the shoreline is rough, old forest fire, so we can't even really hang the hammocks or it'd be difficult anyway, so hopefully something will turn up. What do you think? It's pretty good. It's as good as we can hope for. Yeah, we might have to take this. Because yeah. if we push on, we might get stuck in a bad situation. So. Yeah, it could be dangerous. It's an amazing beach with only our footprints. Yeah. Yeah. Great view. Completely out of the wind. Better take it. Nice eagle feather here. Beautiful. Oh, it's so cool. So big. Yeah, they are. Like, Okay. So I've said in the past that I never bring solar panels on trips because the trips just usually aren't long enough to warrant it. And I'd rather bring 
power banks. I usually bring two 20,000 milliamp power banks and that will see me through a couple weeks. But considering that this might be a three week trip, I decided to bring it, I own it already. So I'm doing it, but honestly, power banks make more sense. I still am a power bank fan, but yeah, something to, to try. Colder than I expected, actually. <laughs> Woo, oh, it's so nice. Woo. 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 That feels really good. Yeah. Black bean burritos on the menu tonight. Great evening here. We had a nap after our dip. Feeling refreshed. Mmm. Oh yeah. <laughs> Well, we certainly got out of the wind. It's extremely calm in the bay. And we've got a great view here from the tent. And if the clouds don't ruin it, it could be a great sunset too. And here's a regional map of Lake Nipigon from the book I'm reading. Way up there. Lovely morning here on Lake Nipigon to start day three. We've got tea, coffee, and Mexican quinoa rehydrating in the pot cozy with yesterday's thermos water so we don't have to make a fire. Nice to have those little efficiencies. And the surf, we could hear it hitting, like there's some islands out there. We could hear it hitting them all night, but it seems to be simmering down and it's been really calm in the bay. So we picked a good spot and we'll get on our way after brekkie. Really excited. Yeah. I'm reading my book more and just <laughs> thinking about this lake. It's pretty cool to be reading a book about the lake your entire trip is on. It's, yeah. Water. <laughs> All right, all packed up, on our way for day three. Everything else from here on out is new. So Kingfisher's ahead of us, and there was a whippoorwill at camp last night. We realized this morning that we're not even 48 hours into our trip, which is really hard to believe, We've seen so much already, but just scratching the surface. Probably the best scenery yet to come, fishing, inflowing creeks and rivers to fish as well and we haven't passed any of those yet and possibility for woodland caribou which are endangered in the area Aaron's never seen one I've only seen one ever so that would be a real highlight for a trip it's beautiful just yeah. so much uninhabited space it's hard to wrap your head around it's crazy we're gonna cut across this bay it doesn't look 
super interesting, so we'll save a bit of time here. We're through the crossing and we're finally out of the uh, forest fire and back into the mature woods and it's nice to be able to smell the conifers and just have more variety in the forest, so. Onward. Onward. Taking a break here to stretch her legs. Beautiful beach and moose and wolf tracks. The moose could be from this morning because it rained. Mm -hmm. That looks pretty fresh. Look at that thing. Yeah. Yeah, it's a good size. Coming around Burnt Point, massive peninsula, and we're going down into Grand Bay. Next big chunk of the trip. Lunch time. Peanut butter and honey wraps, which we'll be having 50 of over the course of the trip. 25 each, roughly. The odd pine here, red and white pine, we're north of their range, but there is the odd one on Nipigon. Looking amazing here in Grand Bay. I think we're about to get it. You can hear it coming across the lake. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Ancient looking cliffs here. Thunder booming way behind us. Eagles flying off. Think we should get out, eh? Yeah. All right. Looks like we found camp for the night. Thunderstorms are threatening, it's just after five, so we we'll call it quits here. Beautiful spot. Want some electrolytes? I would adore some. Chickadees want some. Here, you ready? Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Great campsite so far, but we're really happy to be on rock. Sand beaches are beautiful and nice in a lot of ways, but the sand gets in everything. So we're very happy in here. Glad we got off the water when we did. Wind just started howling. Such unpredictable weather, so 
pick the right time. Got the canoe tied down as well. Food barrel's not going anywhere, it weighs a ton. why you don't want to push your luck too much on a big lake. It only took a few minutes to build up like this. Ended up pulling the canoe up here because the waves were just about reaching it, settling down a bit now, but it was too close for comfort. We didn't want to be thinking about that through the night. Sun just broke through on one side, right as it started raining, big heavy drops. On calzones tonight, eating up the fresh stuff. The back half of the trip is going to be pretty lean. The front passed through pretty quick, gave us a chance to have dinner. Perfect day. Day. Yeah. Scenery is just warming up. Just like us. Oh. About to get on our way for day four. Yesterday, we continued down the shore, cut across this bay, around uh, Burnt Point, down into here. Today, we'll continue down Chiatang Bluff, and it's a long, like 10 kilometers of what looks like cliffs. So it'd be a really nasty spot to get stuck in the wind, very exposed. So hopefully we get a window. Cool, clear morning in the Canadian wilderness. Doesn't get much better than this. Really a joy to be out here this morning. And we seem to have it all to ourselves. We only saw a boat at our access point on day one, just past the access point. So no one else around. And my book about Lake Nipigon speaks to how bizarrely undeveloped Lake Nipigon is. It's just hardly anything on it. The odd cabin or structure, but very little for the most part, which is a miracle and now it's quite protected as well. So hopefully it stays this way forever. Taking a quick bathroom break on this beach. Wind is kicked up quite a bit and we're gonna have to hope that it settles down or we won't get past, be getting past these bluffs.
getting a little rough for an open canoe, so we're gonna get off the water for a bit. According to our SATCOM weather forecast, it's supposed to calm down a lot this afternoon. So, I'm not gonna push it, especially with the open canoe. A lot of advantages to a covered canoe with spray deck, but a lot of disadvantages too, especially for filming that you might not think of, but yeah, our policy is if it gets rough, just get off. Lake simmering down. We just had lunch and tea. Aaron made us a nice platform to hang out on. It's been a nice break. Looks like the lake settled down a bit, so we're gonna get back on our way and hopefully be able to make some progress and see some cliffs. tempting for a shower. I know. <laughs> you can kind of smell that water too. Yeah. It's like coming off here. Like it looks like it actually needs a nice shower. Yeah. We're exposed out. There's a little outflow here but it sounds a lot louder. I'm thinking there's a falls back there. You might have to check it out. this hazy light's hitting it, it makes it look even more magical and ancient. It looks so old. I know. So the bluff continues on that way a little bit, but we got the gist of it and it was stunning. So we're crossing over to that little island and then to the west shore of Lake Nipigon, way up that way. All right, we're across Chitang Bluffs back there, and we've got a long way to go on the west shore here. The, the lake is about 100 kilometers north to south, and it looks really scenic on the topo map. The next marked campsite is about uh, 10 kilometers away, so we're hoping to find something before then. But this shore is looking beautiful so far. Yeah, 
that. There's two spots for hammocks right here. That's perfect. Sweet. Well, get to hang the hammocks this trip. Yeah. I'll pull you in. <laughs> this is what dreams are made of for us. Stone beach site to pull up the canoe. Great spot to cook dinner. A little sunlight left to charge up the, the power bank. And we're back in the hammocks tonight. So happy about that. Canoes tucked away. And back here, a view on the other side of this tiny little point. Should be able to see sunset over there, sunrise that way. We're really happy. Your favorite sight so far. All right, we've got penne tonight. We have three hydrated, what, tomato, spinach, mushroom, some matzah, and parmesan. And the bluffs are across from us. I didn't even notice that earlier. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Too good. To complete the site, a luxurious wind has kicked up. Perfect temperature, absolute comfort. Oh, it's a pelican. Awesome. Wow, just woke up, heard a stick break, went down here and there was a black bear looking right at me, right there. And then he took off into the woods, that's good. It wasn't a big one. Good morning. Good morning. The sunrise action over here. Just missed him again, he's right there. So we'll have to keep an eye out for him. Nice to be back in the hammocks last night and we went without the tarps because the forecast called for no rain. No stars really because the moon's still so bright. Looking forward to that later in the trip though. And we got a great looking day for today. With an exciting wake up call. All right. Not sure if it's already day five or only day five. Feels like <laughs> we've been out here for a while, but in a in a great way. Best way. So happy we have so much left. I'd be sad if we were. It was a ten day trip. It would seem so short right now. Yeah. There's so much left to see. And we got Dalpalak rehydrated for fuel this morning. So here's the map update. That was last night's camp. That's where we got stuck in that beach and started up the west shore to there. And here's the broader view. We've tackled that over four days. And as you can see, there's a lot left. We're at the mouth of the first decent inflow on the trip, Williger Creek. 
and give the fishing a try. There's a huge bike right under me. Oh my goodness, no! He just darted away. He hit, oh, he hit it. Big pike. At least 36 inches. Oh, easily could have been 42. Wow. Okay. <laughs> Fishing motivation increased. Oh, I got my heart racing. He was right here. You got him? Oh, Aaron had the camera ready. Oh, amazing. Oh, okay, that's a win. Sometimes I just love to capture them in some way and to interact with this part of the world that's hidden. Never get to see it unless you fish for them or send the camera down. fish on but it's certainly not that big pike <laughs> no, just a little one Back to the lake, and I just saw the big fish again. He's like short biting this little paddle tail. You would think he would just inhale it. Such a big fish. Fish on. Oh, dang. It's a smaller pike. Oh, it's still decent, yeah. but it's not the one. Well, we've got ground to cover, so we're moving on. There'll be other fish. It's a bit of a headwind today, so it's best we get on our way. In the distance, we're starting to see Caribou Island, and we're hoping to camp in that area. It's well offshore. We'll stick to the mainland, but that'll be a shorter day for us, probably under 20 kilometers. But we got a headwind today, so we might as well wait Put in the big distance when we have favorable conditions. Tomorrow we should have a tailwind. Some days we'll probably be off the water altogether with a really rough day. Then we'll hope I'll have to make up that distance with a good sailing day. So, just going with the flow, basically. We're coming up to an island with a beach, so we're gonna hop out and see if there's a place to camp here. No dice on the beach site, so on we go. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't look great in here. <laughs> Started into a bit of a longer day than expected, and we just can't find a campsite. Our map had one marked here, and there's absolutely nothing. So uh, we're gonna continue. Beautiful day, but we're just getting baked in the sun, so we're ready to get off the water. These low energy nights for a backpacking meal. Easy prep, no cleanup. Stick stoves are just the best. Barely takes any stick fuel. Boil water so fast. I like this one because it's pretty big and doesn't mess around. Hmm. What do you think? 
Oh, good. Mexican style veggie bowl. Not bad. Nice to have an easy meal after a long short day. Mm-hmm. And a great view. Yeah. Couldn't really appreciate it at first, but <laughs> cooling down. Mm -hmm. So much sun this trip. Almost want rain. <laughs> Not bad for Camp 5. Walk down to the other end of the beach. Not too shabby. Camp 5? Camp 4? Camp 4. Uh, no, four. I don't know. I don't know. I'm losing track. I've lost track <laughs> of time. These sand floaties. They're so weird. How does sand float on water? Obviously, surface tension is the answer, but... So we've got these two small islands in front of us. Behind them is Caribou Island. In the distance, I believe, is Grand Cape, where we were on day two. And we carried down that shore. And then way off in the distance, I believe that's Shakespeare Island, an offshore big island chain on Nipigon. And nothing but blue. Early start for day six. We'll be on the water just after sunrise. Big south wind is supposed to kick up today, which could leave some of our route really exposed. So getting out of here, hopefully get some sailing in today too. What a morning. No sign of that wind yet. The lake's as glassy as it's been all trip. Such a sense of freedom out here. We got the wind pulling us, sun's powering our devices, tons of beautiful fresh water, all of our food for three weeks, and no planes, trains, or car shuttles, anything like that. So, a fabulous sense of self reliance. So, we're about to make a small crossing from Champlain Point to Nazoteca Point, and that's going to take us into one of the most anticipated stretches of the trip. Everything north of there looks really, really interesting on the top of the map. To the west of this crossing, there's a big bay, Gull Bay, a small community there as well, and an access point called King's Landing, for any of you Game of Thrones fans out there. Lunch break here in West Bay. It's a fish sanctuary. Interesting and evidently some animals use this as a lunch spot too. There's some poop around and this pike skull. Lots of eagles here and even more pelicans. This whole area where we had lunch has just had tons of pelicans and eagles flying around. And then we came around the corner and right here there's a whole, there's a pelican colony. So there's actually restrictions because they're endangered. So we have to stay 500 meters away. So we'll carry on and give them their space, but it's pretty cool. Yeah. I've never seen that many. Usually I see two at a time. Yeah. Not in Ontario. You don't see that. Stay up.
Here's camp number six in West Bay. Really interesting spot. Lots of wildflowers and a long wraparound beach. We saw some ungulate tracks on it, which could be most likely moose, but could be caribou, who knows? And what did you find? And I got John an anniversary gift for our two years since we got engaged tomorrow. It's a gift money can't buy. The downiest feather you've ever seen. That's incredible. <laughs> It's so soft. Yeah. And we're getting married this fall, so this is our final test for our relationship. Can we survive three weeks together in a canoe? So far, so, good. so great. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we know we can. Wow, that's ridiculous. It's beautiful. Doing chili and bannock tonight. Aaron's got the bannock going. And we found something pretty interesting on the beach. What a unique skull. It's pretty far gone, but I was wondering if it was sturgeon. Maybe that's why this bay is protected for sturgeon. Or it looks kind of like a gar pike, but I'm not aware of gar pike being in here. Pretty interesting. Just had an epiphany. Could it be a pelican. That would make a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. Just heard thunder, so hopefully that holds off for a bit. Let's see where we're at. It's five o'clock or so. 54%. That took all day basically. Still a bit of daylight left, but. Yeah. These are going to be delicious. Almost like having donuts out here, fresh. Which is a real luxury when you're eating mostly dehydrated foods and all that. And I would even love to have fish here for dinner. We had time, but we're in the sanctuary. And there's just a perfect weed bed right off here for fishing. But, oh well. Pelicans and the eagles got to eat too. Our stuff's getting dry in this hot wind. We got to do laundry at some point in this trip, but not yet, not even halfway yet. And down there in the distance, you might be able to make out the pelican colony. It's a little island. Still not sure what the weather's doing, but clouds would be welcome. It's uh, not the most beautiful sight per se, but it is really interesting with a lot of diversity in plant life. And it's the only site so far that has had any signs of being used before. Fire pit. Our tent's in there. And we're mostly hanging out right over here. Here's the map update, and I'm getting in the tent because thunder's starting. Erin's already there. She's feeling some heat exhaustion, I think. So yesterday, we came up into Williger Creek, around Spruce Point, which was kind of nasty, and this campsite didn't exist. So we carried on and ended up camping right there on the beach. Today, came up past Champlain Point, and we ended here in West Bay Provincial Nature Reserve. Tomorrow we're heading around Undercliff Mountain and Echo Rock, which look beautiful, but we were warned about that section, so hopefully it's calm. And we'll carry up past the Kopka and Wabanosh River, White Sand River, some other beautiful destinations, Windigo Bay Provincial Park. And that's just gonna be the first half. Oh, just plopped down into bed. Beautiful breeze above us. And that's good for Erin, she needs to cool down. Although, actually she is cooling down. She's even got her sleeping bag on. If she overheats, she gets a little cold. So, yeah, she has a bit of heat exhaustion. But, just hydrating. 
and hopefully tomorrow we don't get baked by the sun. But another beauty, looking forward to tomorrow. And the wind has changed directions and it's getting pretty strong, so I bet those thunderstorms are coming over our way. Day seven, and it looks like it might be a rest day. We, we plan to be off the water at least one day a week. We got thunderstorms this morning, and potentially waves this afternoon with some strong wind from the south, which would make it tough to get around under Cliff Mountain and Echo Rock, so might be a rest day. Bunch of blue jays keeping us company. Silly sounding creatures. Mm -hmm. Twelve thirty, and we're just having lunch. There was a big storm last night, way bigger than anything we expected, and we were really missing the hammocks in the tent. Yeah, I was thinking this morning about how much I appreciate the hammocks when we have them for rain, where you've got the tarp and you're able to get out if you need, if you have to go to the washroom or something and stay dry, and then everything else is so dry in the hammocks. So you're able to pack up. Yeah, packing up is the biggest part. Yeah, and putting Instead everything of... away, not damp. Yep. Instead of this big sloppy tent. Yeah. Yeah. So, made me really appreciate those, but yeah. there's definitely some benefit to the tent. It was nice to yeah. hang out and be together, but... Always pros and cons, but in the rain, I definitely prefer the hammock. And you yeah. can see as well, yeah, there's a big true. lightning storm, so from under the tarp in the hammock, you can see a lot of it. And we can get a good view. As opposed to looking at the inside of the fly of the tent. So we're just chilling out today and get an early start tomorrow. For our anniversary dinner, we've got poutine, peanut M&Ms for dessert. Electrolyte drink. Yeah. Lemon lime flavored. Mm -hmm. How is it? So good. Mmm. <laughs> poutine was delicious. And we got another thunderstorm booming over there.
broken bat playing a little rock baseball. Broken bat hits a member of the crowd and it starts raining. Ah! For this trip, I decided to bring the book Braiding Sweetgrass, which is one my friend Zilf's been telling me to read for a couple years now, and I'm finally getting the time, and it's such a good book for out here. 10 out of 10. Okay, 640, we're on our way. Got some breakfast bars to go. Earl Grey to go. And Undercliff Mountain in Echo Rock. A couple hours away. Mm -hmm. Exciting day. Just stopped on this beautiful beach. So we cut our eye over here. There are no tracks, I don't think, eh? No, green's pretty hard though. So caribou are very dependent on lichens. They eat a lot of this sort of lichen off the trees and ground. And we notice lichen all over the ground here. So this has been browsed. Yeah but I don't see any tracks. Oh. So, anyway, fun to imagine. Doesn't really matter. It's just fun to imagine them. Pelican. Pelican. There are some faint tracks here, but that's no surprise. Could be moose. Oh, Peregrine Falcon. Wow, that is a sheer drop. Yeah. On Echo Rock here, there's uh, the book says there's some very faint pictographs, so we're just kind of having a look around. I'm not sure if we've found them or not. If it is, they're quite faint, but 
fun to look. Big spiders. up there that look ready to fall on. No sign of the pictographs at Echo Rock, but as we were coming around the corner, there's a campsite right after it, and there were four young guys camped there. First boats we've seen since day one near the launch. Four young guys from the U.S. in kayaks, which make a lot of sense for big water like this, from Wisconsin, Illinois, and Ohio, I think, and it is I sound like it's like I'm so old, but it's great to see young people out here enjoying this. They were on night 11 of their trip, I think they said, and they got a couple more left. They're doing the top half of the lake, but in the opposite direction is us. They started at High Hill, so we'll be there probably in eight days or so. PB and honey wraps. That's quick lunch. Some interesting tracks on the beach here. Hard to tell, like for us to tell the difference between moose and caribou. And small. But these look, we've seen tons of moose tracks in our lives. These look a little different. Mm -hmm. What would it mean to you to see one? That would be pretty special. Yeah. Yeah, they're so cool. They're just so endangered and rare. Yeah. Almost like, like they could be extinct someday, and I hate to think of that, but to get to see one before they do, mm -hmm. if they do, we just, is just a privilege. Mm -hmm. Incredible wildflowers here. This is just a fascinating area. Echo Rock, and now we're passing by an old Hudson Bay Company trading post from 1850 to 1937 is what I think it said in, in Nancy Scott's book. Of course, there's much older indigenous history here dating back 8,000 years to the end of the last ice age when the glaciers were coming out of here. And then on top of that, there's Outer Barn Island ahead of us, which is just a remarkable island. Fortunately, it's way offshore and we won't be seeing it up close, but even afar, it's a sight to see. In the book, there were close to 20 fur trading posts on Lake Nipigon itself and even more in the basin, but it sounds like there are virtually no remnants left of any of them. Just came around this corner and spooked a big bald eagle. It took off and we were like, I wonder if it had a fish there. Sure enough, big chunky pike. Probably a 10 pound fish right there. It's not that long, but it's thick. Also an old campsite here. And there are a few blueberries, first we've seen yet, and some Saskatoon berries as well. That's nice. And an enormous, I don't even know if you can call that a fire pit. Stonemason camped here. Swans, beautiful. Started coming down pretty hard on us. We were about to stop for lunch, so we're actually gonna set up a tarp and wait some of it out. Well, we're drying out. Didn't last, but it was a hard downpour. Mm -hmm. Got sweet potato curry, right? Yep. In the pot cozy. 
And this is a nice site. We plan on stopping here for lunch anyway. Just happened to start pouring when we got here. Very nice. Probably the nicest established site we've seen. Looks like we're in for showers today, despite our 0% precipitation forecast. So we decided we we're going to stick around here. It's mid-afternoon. We've done 27 kilometers today, right? 26? 27. 27? So that's good enough. We only have to average 20 per day. We're expecting to be windbound some days. And yeah, we just want to hang out here. we got a really exciting part coming up. And the next campsites are 12 kilometers away, so we'll do it tomorrow with full head of steam. We're also really glad to be filtering some new water here and to have a swim somewhere else because there was that pel pelican colony, I don't know, probably a kilometer and a half away from our site, but the wind and waves were blowing right toward us. And they pooped so much on their little island and it was definitely all blowing into us. After we went for a swim, we had a bit of swimmer's itch. So, yeah. Ready for a swim. Okay, we're all moved in for camp number eight. Gonna be another early start tomorrow, so Aaron's getting in a nap. We just had a dip, drying everything off, and we'll be on the water hopefully around sunrise tomorrow. Closing out day eight here, having a light dinner, and it was a great start to the second week of this trip. Yeah. Second phase. To Very excited tomorrow to get to the mouth of the Kopka River Provincial Park. It's actually Wabanosh River, but the Kopka drains right in before that. And mm -hmm. hoping for good, good fish in there. Yeah. Morning of day nine, on our way, excited for this one. We got the mouth of the Kopka Provincial Park and Wabanosh River, and I'll definitely be wetting the line there. Otters just dove right in front of us. This inner barn island comes into view. Saw outer barn island yesterday. Where did the cheeky fellas go? <laughs> hey there.
Florida morning. Do not expect this scenery on this shoreline here. Wow. Wow. <laughs> As we come around the corner here, we can start to see some gold in the hills, so things are starting to change for fall. It's still early August, but up here the colors start changing early. Oh, I'm so helpless. Mm -hmm. Amazing bird life on Nipigon continues. Got to be a dozen mergansers it looks like on a rock over there. Some bank swallow holes, you don't see the swallows. Kingfishers, lots of birds, so great. So this morning we've come from English Point there along this beautiful rocky shore into Wabanash Bay and Kapika River Provincial Park and we're right at the mouth there of the river. The Wabanash flows in here into Wabanash Lake and the Kapka River, famous Kapka River flows in here as well and they drain into Nipkin here. I paddled up the Kapka uh, last summer and it was stunning. But no bites here yet. erin has got her magnet out for some magnet fishing. Hopefully we'll get something. When I ran into the four guys yesterday in the kayaks, I asked if they had any luck fishing and they didn't. So I think we both felt better knowing that each party hadn't had any success. A little bit of pride restored. of pelicans ahead of us and uh, so it's an interesting spot beautiful scenery and in my notes I wrote that Hudson Bay Company had the Wabanosh house that, over there from 1821 to 1850 and right over there Northwest Company Fort Duncan from 1795 to 1821 we were gonna get out and take a look around but um, the grass is actually a lot taller than we anticipated so we probably won't even see much and just catch a bunch of bugs so We'll leave it alone, but it's cool. Yeah, in the book, it sounds like there aren't any relics left, really. It's extremely lucky to find something, so. Doing good, just beautiful wildflowers now. Mm -hmm. Up in the river mouth, finally got a bite. It's pretty spunky. Not too big, but it's got a bite. This has got to be a trout. Wow. Well, gotta be a trout. Keeping that rod bent. Single barbless hook. Ooh. Oh, that's a nice. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Is that a brook trout? I think it might that's huge. Holy cow. This is what Nipigin is famous for. Oh my goodness, that is. That's a huge brook trout. Holy smokes. Come on. Oh my. Holy smokes. That is a spectacular. That's my biggest brook trout ever, I think. Wow. And clear the hook, keep the fish in the water. Oh my goodness, it just <laughs> spilled out. Aaron got it. 
on camera. That's all right. I don't care about the photo too much anymore, but yeah, as long as you got something. Wow. Oh my God. What an idiot. That was a powerful fish. <laughs> it was, I don't know, maybe, I don't know, who cares? Wow. That is what I was expecting. Wow. Got it on this guy. Might have found the reason for the relative lack of fish back there. There's a rapid ahead and a bunch of pelicans are fishing it, so this looks promising. I would estimate that brook trout at least four pounds, if not five, five plus. Yeah, yeah, Aaron says five plus. It, it could have been six. Oh. Not getting much magnet fishing, which isn't a huge surprise because it's a really big lake, so lots of coming across something to pick up or slim, but it's kind of cool like seeing the rocks that come up, so it sticks to the magnet. There's often lots of debris and sediment. It's fun. Lots of iron content in it or something, I guess. Yeah, I think so, yeah. High iron. I don't know what we found here, some old engine, maybe old piece of a... Ooh. Forestry equipment, I guess. Yeah, some form of forestry equipment. Looks like an engine and then a bunch of gears over here. To protect the trout on Nipigon, you're not allowed to keep them in a live well. Obviously, we don't have a live well or ice or anything, so I wasn't going to keep a fish like that because it's just way too much for, for one sitting. And it has to be at least 56 centimeters on Nipigon, same as Superior. I think that's 23 inches, which is an enormous brook trout. That's a, just a crazy standard, but it speaks to how big they get here. But I was just trying to release that fish gently, keeping the water, lost focus. Hopefully I'll get another one, because that would have been the fish of the trip. Fish was just out of frame for me. Aaron got a little with the action cam up front, but it was on like the really wide view. So it's, there's no detail to it. Anyway, we gotta move on, unfortunately. We could fish this all day, but the campsites that were marked on the map here don't exist, so we gotta carry on, and the next one marked on the map is 18 kilometers away, so onward. Aaron's taking a turn, wow. Got some round egg. Mm -hmm. Want the net? Mm-hmm. Walleye? Oh, okay. get a good look. Yeah, oh, it's pretty nice walleye. Good job, hon. That's how it's done. <laughs> there we go. Just getting it warmed up for you. Found a long beach before too long the view of inner barn island and many others the lake's chopping up on us and we were stopped here for lunch and just figured we'll stay there's a little creek coming in here it's pretty interesting and some hammocking spots back in the woods so we'd be happy to be in the hammocks tonight this burl's crazy i've never seen anything like it not anything that big Look at that. Look at the size of it. So here's camp nine. For the eighth time out of nine, we are in a kind of a bush site slash beach. 
I've only been on last night's established campsite. And it's only the second time we've been in the hammocks. So we're really happy about that. So comfy. This is a pretty good summary of the weather on Nipigon so far. It can be totally clear, and then it just gets nasty. This was the other reason we stopped here. In the forecast, it was supposed to get stormy. That was really close. Yes. I hope that didn't hit the canoe. <laughs> <laughs> Same, and if it did, I'm glad we're not in it. Oh man, yeah, good call to get off early. Yeah. This lake is a beast. Wow. What entertainment. That's a show. You know what we'll be looking at inside the tent? What's that? You know what we'll be looking at inside the tent? Tent. The tent. <laughs> this is much better. Oh yeah. Oh my. Right on top of us. The lightning and thunder, it's instantaneous. Yeah. Passing and the sun's back out. We got this creek flowing again. The wind and waves were driving water into it. Now it's flowing out. Awesome dinner, just making a quick dinner here on the alcohol stove. Off to bed, in good time today. Gotta wake up early tomorrow. We got northward progress to make and some potential headwinds. So as if I wasn't <laughs> stupid enough after dumping that incredible world-class brook trout <laughs> back in the lake, uh, I just pointed out to Erin how bad my screen's getting on my cell phone. And she said it shouldn't scratch like that. This could be just the original pr screen protector. I've had this problem for like a year and I've just been riding it out. Sure enough, <laughs> that is a screen protector. <laughs> and I it. now have a brand new screen. I can oh. barely see through this thing. <laughs> oh, you're so funny. Oh, it's so great. <laughs> Look at that. Silver lining to today. Brand new. And a, a great day overall. Yeah, it was a good day. Aside from that, I'm sorry.
was walking the beach after dinner and it's glassy calm now. cow we just had something big run right how far do you think that was from you uh, very close a, a couple of three a couple meters, meters maybe what's that three meters oh, yeah something went through here we felt it felt wildlifey here <laughs> and it proved to be true <laughs> oh i guess we'll probably see tracks on the beach it ran right through here and i don't see any sign of it now Wow, what time is it? 4.30? Yeah. Oh, that'll wake you up. Mm-hmm. That's uh, around the time that we had something run through our site last I trip. <laughs> this is the uh, the hour for them. <laughs> They're waking up. The witching hour. Well, I heard like a stick break and then suddenly it was really loud. It, w it must have been a moose. Yeah, hopefully the tracks on the beach will reveal when we get up. Whew. Okay. Back to sleep? Oh, uh, try. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You're okay? Yeah, I'm fine. Okay. You good. I was definitely... Oh my goodness. Sounds like a human. And now we got a wolf or like at least a coyote. It was pretty close too. Was not far. <laughs> All right, first light's creeping in here on day 10. We're getting out of here. <laughs> Interesting experience. Huge thunderstorm. A moose almost runs down Aaron in the dark. And then a wolf howl. Coyotes aren't as common as wolves here, so more than likely it was a wolf. And it was close, just the other side of the creek, I would say. Very close. Mm, very close. We're walking the beach now, eager to hopefully find some tracks. And it's funny because last or yesterday evening we were both saying we've had this animal vibe. There's like this primal sense I think that we're not really tapped into. You can just feel a wildlifey spot. That looks like it's been disturbed because mm -hmm. there's dry sand. Yeah. Okay. Here it is. Tracks. Yep. So that looks probably like a moose. Yeah. Running. Huh. Yeah. Yeah. There it is. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Wow. That's a big one. Holy. Mm. Oh, what? That's a big moose. Here. Holy cow. Dew that was claws. a tank. And there are these really pronounced dew claws behind, huh. which I think can be more indicative of caribou, but also you'll see them in moose tracks sometimes. Yeah. Oh man, if that was a caribou, that would be just I'm, tragic. I think it's too big. I think so too. Yeah. I think the tracks are too big. Yeah. There it yeah. goes. Oh and, then, oh, and then it continues down here. Yeah. Oh man, that's so funny. Yeah, we gave it quite the startle too. Yeah. I don't know. Huh. I don't see as huge here. No. That's interesting. Oh, it's got a dew claw. Yeah, I know. I said that. It's I got know. a really pronounced dew claw. That could have been 
That could have been caribou. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Might have been. These now they don't look as big now that they're in now that it's not compacted sand and wow. <laughs> okay, well <laughs> maybe someone can confirm with the tracks. Ooh, if wait. so, that would be Aaron's first caribou experience. Mm -hmm. Not the one we drubbed up, but anyway, that was cool. Well it's quite the wake up, but looks like it's gonna be a beautiful day and we're gonna be on the lake early, so yeah. it's a win. There's a barred owl hooting over there now. As a cameraman, I feel like I've failed on this trip so far. <laughs> we had that black bear at the site um, four or five days ago. I didn't get any footage of the massive brook trout, <laughs> this potential caribou. That one couldn't really be avoided. There was nothing I could do. No. Or the wolf most likely howling 50 meters from our site. Hopefully I'll make up for it. <laughs> Sorry. I mean, your instinct was to yell and scare the caribou away to protect me, so yeah. it's okay. <laughs> Another perfect, clear, cool morning in the Canadian wilderness. Paddling on a big lake like this, sunrise, fair in, no place in the universe I'd rather be Inner Barn Islands coming around the corner here, and it just looks amazing in the morning sun. We're expecting a headwind today. And right now we've got a tailwind. So we're gonna make the most of that. Looks like we could have headwinds for the next couple days. So we set this trip up to be a marathon, not a sprint. So we had time to enjoy stuff and we only have to average about 20 kilometers per day. Yesterday we only did 14 and today we have 16 to the next campsite, which we might stay at. We'll see, see how much we like it. At the most, we might get to the White Sand River. Another amazing beach for a lunch spot. And something really bizarre to swim under the canoe. It's a big insect like I've never seen before. Where'd it go? It's gone. Oh, there it is. This is weird. It's got like big horns on it. I don't think I've ever seen a beetle like that, or no, it's not a beetle. And then there's a big earthworm right there too. Oh. <laughs> Do you want to lift it out? That's hilarious. Oh man, I can't believe it went on it. <laughs> It's gonna look so freaky on camera, probably. Mm -hmm. Like a monster.
Passing by Castle Island now with a tailwind, a beautiful tailwind, on a day that we thought we'd have a headwind. Castle's building in the sky too, supposed to be storms later, potentially again today. So we're just going to cruise, enjoy this afternoon, get off the water in decent time. Pelicans in a flying V. Oh, yeah. That was incredible. Sweet I just piece. heard like their wing beats as a unit almost. <laughs> like heard them soaring through. Yeah. It was very cool. We've got the headwind we were expecting now, but we're just a couple kilometers away from the mouth of the White Sand River, and it's clear from the shoreline where it gets its name. So we're the mouth of the white sand, really exciting to be here and we'll hopefully fish it. It's super shallow though and we're hoping to camp here but it looks pretty bleak. Either tall sand banks or thick, thick bush. So we've just dipped into the white sand river, we're hoping to find camp somewhere along here. Oh, it's just a beaver. <laughs> okay. Whoa. Turtle us <laughs> just swam under the canoe. <laughs> oh man! After last night, we're uh, we're a little on edge, maybe. Still there? I don't know. He no. was visible like here for a bit. So. <laughs> oh <Sorry. laughs> man! Just scrambled out of the bush. <laughs> As you were saying, <laughs> it almost tipped us. Yeah. As I was saying, it feels nice and safe on the river. <laughs> Feels nice to be tucked in after that headwind and just being on the big lake. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's really it just it's such a cool feeling on the river, but uh, yeah, that was fun. <laughs> oh man. What do you think? Yeah, I think we can probably get hammocks up in here. Okay. We'd love to camp on the river tonight, and Aaron's hopped out, and looks like this might be workable. Peaceful change of pace for tonight. This log stopped us on the river. We're gonna try and portage around that, so we figured we'd get out here and see if we can make anything work. And we found a really cool spot on this bend in the river. There's a game trail right on it, which is probably beaver. Almost for sure, based on this spot. Yeah. Very cool, very peaceful. So nice to be in some more mature woods. A couple hammock spots over there. All right, tarps up and cook some lunch. Well, this camp is a breath of fresh air. We got water access down there. No sand to worry about after many beaches, which are nice in a lot of ways, but always trying to avoid sand in your shelter and food. It gets a bit old, so. Yeah, it's sweet to get a bit of river travel almost. Haven't had any river tripping this season, basically. Big lakes. And I'm gonna wet my line before something moves in. It looks like that might happen. 
We even lined this beaver trail with some deadfall. It's pretty bougie. Starting to rain, but I mostly just wanted to get a few casts onto this log. I can be happy with that if I do. So here's the map update for the last two days. Came around here into Wabanosh Bay, up the river, back out and around to there, past Castle Island, up the white sand to there. Next points of interest, Windigo Bay, Provincial Park and Bay, and Mount St. John. This morning we're gonna head up the river and just check it out a little bit. We could hear some moving water, so we're hoping to find a little bit of rapids or something that we can cast a line in. And it's just been nice to be on the river, so we're gonna see a little bit more of it. Really nice to be paddling an unloaded canoe. We've got normally, I don't know, 200 pounds a year at least in here. Yeah, it's beautiful in the river. There's some cliffs back there. You can't see them from camp, but we're camped right there. No luck, but I bet in spring and fall this is quite a spot. There's our camp in there. You can barely tell it's in there. Back to camp. That was a nice change of pace and everything about this, this camp has been a nice change. And it's been windy, gray, and drizzly, so nice to be off the lake and tucked in here. It's supposed to die down a little this afternoon, so we'll get on our way after lunch. Okay, we just packed up and had lunch, and we're on our way back to Nipigon. Coming along the shore of these tall sand banks and the sand stretches out, I don't know how far, but it's very shallow and flawless sand. A couple trumpeter swans here making our way along the shore. Yesterday we saw this cleared land and maybe 15 buildings from afar and it was almost 
bizarre to see them after seeing almost nothing but bush for the last 11 days. And I happened to read about what this is or was in my book today about the lake. So in 1884, the Windigo Bay Fur Trading Post was established around this area and this community was developed as well to help conduct business with it in the convenient location. However, decades ago the Nipigon River was dammed which raised the water level on the lake by I think about 70 centimeters and that caused erosion in new places including here. Even some burial grounds were eroded sadly and the community ended up relocating. In the book it says Old White Sands is used seasonally by White Sand First Nation as a healing lodge, boat launch and a few cabins have built at the site and they're also adjacent to Mount St. John and Windigo Bay, which are the next points of interest on our trip. Unbelievable. It's like close to a kilometer, we just followed him along the shoreline. And he's aware of us and just completely unperturbed. We're just keeping a respectful distance, but it's pretty just incredible. I've never had an encounter like that. No. Does not care. Barely even looked up at us. Yeah. Doesn't care. It was so cool. Coming up to the mouth of Kenna Creek, there's a campsite marked on our map there. I'm going to bet that it doesn't exist, but we're going to check it out. And in any case, we just saw a heron flying around, perched at the top of the tree. We've never seen a heron perch like that, so pretty cool. Yeah, no sign of anything in here, but beautiful northern woods. Back to the big lake and stopping here on this rock, inspecting it for a potential campsite. But it was also a Hudson Bay Company trading post from the 1884 through all the way to the 1950s. Not all that long ago. And we might be able to tent here actually. Blueberry shrubs, but no blueberries on them. We were really hoping for lots of blueberries to keep produce coming into us on this trip, but oh well. 
Lots of this blueberry look alike, Clintonia, but can't eat that. Yeah, it's a nice sight. We'll be in the tent tonight. It's got rock, sunset view, sunrise view over this way, and we'll have some fun looking for relics. I don't know if this is the exact site of it, but it was around here. Another great day with trumpeter swans, black bear, and the heron. And some gulls here are begging. Beautiful view. And the islands, there are, I think like 500 islands on Nipigon. And the distances, they all look different. And some of them create mirages. Some of them look like they're floating in, above the water. And we're right across from Windigo Island. Tomorrow we'll be heading around into Windigo Bay. Just on the edge of it here. <laughs> Pretty bold. We're doing a little relic hunting this evening. No signs of anything yet. This seems caribou -y. Yeah, you can picture some caribou walking through these woods. Munching on these lichens, old man's beard, they love this. Tons of Labrador tea here. Sphagnum moss. This is lovely. Sun's coming out too, hopefully for sunset. Day 12 starting out is an ugly one. It's cold and gray and windy and not a nice day for paddling. So we're sitting tight this morning to see what happens. We've only taken one rest day so far through 11 days of travel. And we've budgeted three for the trip. We're expecting to be windbound for at least three days on the trip, just knowing the nature of this light. So if we have to sit tight today, that's fine. Aaron is whipping us up a real treat, Bannock with raspberries dehydrated raspberries she did these at home it's gonna be amazing yeah this will be nice just what we need on a cool gray morning yeah let's get to things i learned to make bannock when i lived in geraldton i was lucky enough to know several women who were very generous with their knowledge and one of them who taught me most of what I know about bannock making is Sandra mm -hmm. Ice. So thanks Sandra if you ever see this. Really appreciate it. So good. <laughs> Haven't had a shore lunch yet on this trip. That would be a really nice thing if I got one today. Give it a shot.
It's starting to drizzle and it's not a pleasant day on Nipigon, but it can be far worse. The weather's been pretty good to us overall, very good. But there's a quote in the book here that I thought it was fitting for today. It talks about the recreational opportunities here and says, but it must be remembered that this is a wild and remote lake that can be very treacherous, even for experienced adventurers. Due to a particular set of circumstances, the wind and swells can be dangerous and unpredictable. Swells tend to be steep and of short frequency and can therefore be especially treacherous. The wind speeds on the lake, in combination with the lake's long fetches of open water, can make boating very hazardous for small watercraft. Moreover, most of the shoreline is not hospitable for camping and there are few suitable campsites. Those who venture out onto the lake must always be mindful of the unpredictable and hazardous nature of the lake. This east wind has not let up at all today. Fished a little, no luck. So we're cooking up dinner back here. And then we got a special treat tonight, for ourselves anyway. setting up movie night here. Mm -hmm. We never do this on trips, but given the length, we decided to bring one movie. And you could probably guess what it is. Time for an intermission. Halfway through the movie, some popcorn kernels, oil and salt. That's it. So good. Real movie night. Mm -hmm. Beautiful sky to start day 13, lucky 13, and we'll be looking at the sky tonight, hopefully. Some stargazing, the moon's finally getting small, and there's supposed to be the Perseid meteor shower tonight, so we're really looking forward to that. It's supposed to be clear. Fingers crossed. Alright, we on the move? We on the move. This feels good after a rest day. Yeah, it does. So for day 13, we're heading into Windigo Bay. And in our book, there's a quote about this section. It talks about Norval Morisot, who was an artist born on Lake Nipigon, and we both love his work. And it says, Morisot wrote a book of Ojibwe legends, including the chilling tale of the infamous evil spirit, Windigo, which in the book is said to reside in the northwest reaches of Lake Nipigon at Windigo Bay, where the legendary spirit of the Ojibwe perhaps lingers still. Eerie. The, uh, the Wendigo is the most horrifying uh, folklore beast or demon that I know of. Haystack Mountain in the distance as we come into Wendigo Bay. And there's no campsites marked here, but on the far side of Wendigo Bay, there's the Picatigushi River. We might look at that for a campsite, at least fish it. And then there's a point called Meeting Point, which I'm assuming has some historical significance. Hopefully we'll camp there, because the next campsite marked on our map is about 60 or 70 kilometers away. So 
So, the magnets come in handy. Butterfingers, me, dropped my phone in the lake. And thank goodness we had the magnet. I was able to scoop it up. Yeah. It seems to work fine. waterproof these days. Yeah. I was just checking it to pull it on my life jacket to check the time and flop. So, saved me having to go for a dip. At the north end of the bay. Oh, just scared a couple ducks. <laughs> and Aaron. And it's uh, really peaceful and rich plant life in here. Birds, all this dark soil. Yeah, nice change of pace. Quite a special place in Windigo Bay. On our map, beaches are depicted with this brown outline around the shoreline. And Windigo Bay, before the dam on the Nipigon River, the dams, it was all beach. And you can see it's pristine sand for miles. And it's it's kind of sad to picture that all being washed away and drowned. But still, despite the damming, this lake is a masterpiece. peanut butter and honey wraps for the sixth time so far on this trip, but very convenient, pretty filling and satisfying, and we are not sick of them at all. In fact, we look forward to them. Windigo Bay has turned out to be a beautiful spot. Haystack Mountain is in there behind us. It's a really unique shape. Tons of wildflowers, and we feel like we're just on the cusp of a wildlife sighting. Just got that vibe. Back on our way and we're at the mouth of the Picadagushi River now and there's all these old trees here that I guess got washed out by elevated water levels from the dam and these cedars take forever to rot so they're still just lying here. Hoping to get into some fish here but it's been quite shallow. There's another eagle taken off. We've seen at least a hundred on this trip. Nest over there on the left. Nice looking river, but we're heading back to the lake and we might have a little sailing opportunity here too.
We got about five kilometers of sailing in this afternoon and we're getting close to meeting point, which is where we're hoping to find camp for the evening. Okay, something called out to us right away. This big, beautiful rock, nice old forest behind, spot for the hammocks, and a fantastic view. We get laundry going right away. So because of the length of this trip, we need to do laundry halfway. We plan to do it on day 10 or 11, and suddenly it's day 13, we haven't had the chance. So glad to get this. Got some water in the dry bag. And some camp suds, put these in here. I'll wring everything out, squeeze the soap through everything, and then dump it way back in the woods because this is biodegradable, but only in soil, not in the water. Back in the hammocks tonight and this is the closest we've ever set them up there's literally a foot and a half between the ends of our hammocks and we're hoping to go tarpless tonight for the meteor shower we're all settled in here really happy with this camp we've got black bean burritos going today and uh, we put hash browns in there too it's a nice combo and Aaron spotted this something I love to oh, yeah. see it's a survey monument, so topographic survey of Canada, Ontario sheep host, C6, I mm -hmm. guess is the reference, and it was put in in 1926. And they use those as geographic reference points, so that's like a, a known point on the earth. Aaron just spotted this new dragonfly. It would have just crawled out of this shell, and now it's shaping up. That cloud is a duck. That is an immaculate duck. Got a fish on the third or fourth cast. Haven't got a look at it yet. Not a long pike, but pretty stout and powerful. Oh, that's not too bad. Don't want it flopping around. Got my pliers here ready. Whenever I'm fishing, pliers are at the ready. Give me a quick look. It's pretty thick. It's like the thickest pike I've ever caught that's not long at all. Thank you. Not allowed to keep pike between 27 and 36 inches on nip again. So, away she goes. Probably in that limit. Watching the sunset and boiling up some mint tea. Wind down day 13. Hasn't been unlucky at all. It's been one of her favorite days of the trip. Beautiful view. And we're really looking forward to stargazing tonight. We've seen a number of starry nights so far, but nothing compared to when there's no moon so mm -hmm. we're getting close to that and there's the meteor shower tonight so we're pumped yeah it's been a great day one of my favorites yeah windigo bay was just amazing so much life in there mm -hmm. I'm surprised we didn't see wildlife but... life and color beauty mm -hmm. so much color Okay, Here goes the wildlife lens. And for the first time on this trip, in comes the astro. Let's do this.
Morning of day 14, and what a night. It's Stargazer's dream. Countless stars, Milky Way, a bit of aurora glow, and meteor shower. Yeah, and it was totally clear, calm, mild, not too many bugs, it was perfect. And it's been cool on this trip to be looking back at where we've been the whole time. Back way over there, we can see the tall sand banks and Mount St. John, and yeah, we've always been looking back at what we've seen. It's an interesting way to progress on a trip. And we still got a, quite a bit left, mm -hmm. about another week. So, lots left to see. All right, 9 a.m., ready to get on our way. A little later than normal because of the stargazing. And we've got a nicely packed canoe, a lot in here. We keep a double blade behind us for windy conditions as, and as a backup. Camera bag, tripod, day bag, map, one pack, two packs, barrel, tent, overflow bag, odds and ends. Place that on top. And under here we do have two dry suits for each of us, but we haven't felt the need to use them yet, which is great. And yeah, we're on our way. Taking a break here on another beach. This is a long one. Stretching our legs, walking down it. The usual tracks, moose or possibly caribou. I'd say the odds of it being a moose to caribou are probably a hundred to one. Aaron spotted a moose over there. I'm gonna try to get my other camera. We have a, a call. We go, hoo, 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 hoo. Oh, oh, no way. It's caribou. No way. No way. That was Aaron's first caribou, my second. We were just talking about it. No way. <laughs> no way. No way. That was incredible. It got to like, it was like 50 feet from me. I know, I was getting a little worried because, you know, yeah. unpredictable. You never know. I can't believe that just happened. 100 to 1. All these tracks, that we, I just said to her, every time we see these tracks, we're probably just kidding ourselves and it's our imaginations. Wow. 
it's moose, you know. But that is a privilege to see, oh. truly. And we just established this last night. I said if we see wildlife, yeah, we need a like, call to each other. That's not going to be like too obvious. We said, hoo 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 hoo, and you did it flawlessly. I had time to run down the yeah. beach, get my other camera. Oh. That was incredible and it was such a good like yeah I got as close as I was comfortable just trotting down the beach not noticing me I heard it first because it was in the rocks I thought I heard it and then yeah no way I saw it and it just kept trotting our way oh my <laughs> wow that was just perfect <laughs> oh We're gonna go look at the tracks. So we've just come back to look at the tracks. And so I was sitting, I was actually looking for rocks and I was down the beach there, probably about 50 meters. Um, kind of, I don't know if you can see, but there's a tree fallen. Uh, and then here's the print, which is cool. It's got the really clear dew claw back here. And then compared to moose, it's actually kind of seems almost like these are more spread out. Like I feel like moose are a little bit more compressed, but that would be it running back once it saw me yeah on the on my lens it looked like she was really close to it because yeah. of the compression effect of telephoto lenses yeah surprisingly the tracks aren't as distinct as you might imagine for a running caribou and you may have seen nature documentaries showing herds of caribou but those would be tundra caribou where they're a lot more numerous here these are woodland caribou mm -hmm. they're in danger it's pristine beach after pristine beach here just moose tracks or caribou tracks that's that's all this is the nicest beach we've come across. We've seen a lot on this trip and they're all beautiful, but this one, something about it, the sand seems even whiter. And then there's just this stand of almost two dozen red pine that are very mature. It's just a mesmerizing beach. Couldn't resist getting out. It's so tempting to camp here, but if we don't make good progress we're gonna get behind and we could get in a pickle if we get windbound for a couple days so keep moving but we'll check it out found this oh it looks quite older than i expected mm -hmm. what i think it is kind of trap oh uh, yeah good call yeah, some sort of probably. Hmm. Kind of cool. Any date or anything on it? Yeah. She's pretty rusty. Definitely pretty old.
was wild. They looked like rocks. And then John noticed one was a moose. And I finally saw it and I was watching it and the one in, rock in front of it popped up. Yeah, you got startled. <laughs> like I, I just didn't, I thought it was a rock. Yeah, they were bobbing around just Literally, diving for whatever they like to eat down there. Something down there, it looked like moose bobbing for apples. Oh man, that what was a so day. cool. What a day. Oh. Doesn't look like anything too appetizing down there. But they were having that out. Oh, actually, here's a little weed floating. So, that's probably what they were eating. Oh, and some of this too. Is that coontail? Coming around North Bay Point, and there are a bunch of islands and beaches marked on the map in this area. Hoping to make camp somewhere around there. So our day got a little bit longer than anticipated, but found a nice beach here. Beautiful sand, flat spot, and a great view. And we'll be up early tomorrow, so we gotta call it quits. Sun's going down. We're kind of happy to see it going down. We got a lot of sun again today. Can't complain about that, but it uh, baked us a little bit. Erin's lying down, she's she's pretty pooped. But a beautiful spot and an unbelievable day. Still has, hasn't sunk in that that was real. Caribou, the couple of moose, but mostly the caribou. And it's time for a map update. We've got this handy rock here, which has become like our shelving unit. So yesterday we came around Windigo Bay and, oops. Oops, oops, making a mess. Down to meeting point here. Today we went through these islands and down here, just outside the mouth of Umbabaka Bay. What a view from the tent tonight. And we won't even have to get out of the tent to stargaze tonight. Just leave this like this, and we'll be able to see it all. Day 15. This is officially our longest, the longest yeah. trip either of us have ever done. We did a 14 day trip in 2020 that was 250 kilometers, which we've already well surpassed. But that trip had 60 portages yeah. and this has zero. So, <laughs> different game. Yeah. It's a chilly one. Glad to have tea. Another beautiful starry night and another clear day. Can't believe the weather we're having.
pretty perfect morning out here, but we really wanted to sleep in today. The early rises, they catch up with you. But we got potentially a, a wind that's gonna stop us this afternoon with waves, and tomorrow, perhaps all day. So we gotta get in distance while we have the opportunity. Yesterday we were talking about the caribou and I was like, the odds of seeing one versus a moose are about 100 to one. We were just talking about how we need to pick up the fishing on this trip and a bite seconds later. So we gotta start talking about these things because we seem to be able to manifest them. <laughs> I've never seen a pike jump like that. So it's not that interesting of a fish, but that was the best <laughs> jump I've ever got out of a pike. Again, it's a, a pike that's right in that limit that you can't keep, but not a bad one. Thank you. Passing by the mouth of Umbabaka Bay. It's a massive one. It's bigger than most lakes you'd find anywhere. Just this bay. Yep, a little walleye. Not so. Hmm. Dang, we gotta we gotta get going today. But I wish I could keep this one. Just don't have time to pick it up, and I don't have a. I don't like to keep uh, dead fish in the boat too long. Get you out of here soon. You can hear a chopper in the distance. Probably scouting forest fires. There's a there's a haze back in the air today but we haven't seen anything immediate. It could be from the thousands of kilometers away. There are huge fire, forest fires that can produce that smoke. And all we've seen basically is aircraft. That day that we saw the four kayaks in that one group, we also saw a sleeper boat from afar in the distance, like way in the distance. And we haven't seen anyone since, even at old White Sands where there were those cabins. No one feels like we have the lake to ourselves. In the distance behind me is a point we're trying to get to. It's uh, the tip of South Peninsula. And if we're able to get there today, it'll put us in a pretty decent position if we get stuck tomorrow with the weather. And we're about halfway there. So just keep powering through and we should be, be able to make it before the wind picks up. Nice spot here on this big slab of rock. And we could see lots of blueberry shrubs. So we just had to check it out, but still nothing. Actually, there's... <laughs> There are two, and one is pretty desiccated. Back here in the shade, they're getting a bit more moisture, and there is a respectable handful to be had here. Oh, that one's covered in spider webs, dang it. <laughs> First fresh produce in a while. Mm. Yep. That's nice. There's an old sign posted here, too. Hasn't been Department of Game and Fisheries for a long time. Mm -hmm. Well, good thing we started early. It's starting to chop up fast and we found a perfect spot to camp. Checks all our boxes. So this will be home. We picked out our next camp and the timing worked out beautifully. It's really starting to get nasty out there. Aaron set up the tent here beautifully. Really cozy spot, very unique site. I just rolled my ankle, but we've used our medical expertise to determine that it's not a mortal blow. So I'll probably live. And tomorrow we expect to be forced to stay here. So, and we have no portages on this trip. So it was a pretty good time to roll an ankle.
There's a map update, full map today. There, past Umbabaca Bay, down the South Peninsula to there, where we should have a great view of it if southwest winds kick up some waves tomorrow. Should be in for a show. So the canoes down there by the water, tents through the trees, tons of blueberry shrubs, and as much as they're sparse, Aaron's collecting a bunch. A nice, have a nice dessert, and just such an interesting area. Tons to explore. There's a pile of rocks here. It could be an old rock cairn or a fire pit, whatever it is. It hasn't been used for a while, but I suspect it might have been put here to draw attention to this. This is crazy. It looks like we found the next one in the series, which is a, an insane coincidence that we happened to camp at two of them in, mm -hmm. within three nights. Because this says sheep post C5, the last one was C6, same, same here. here. That's so cool. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. And it's tucked in here. Yeah. The odds of stumbling upon them are pretty thin. Oh, ridiculously yeah, right? slim odds. That's, that's, funny. that's insane. <laughs> so, ended up with about 100 milliliters of berries, which doesn't seem like much, but... That's a lot of work. Yeah. Slim pickings, and after none for so long, be happy to take our 50 mils each for the night. Call it dessert. Amazing. Thank you. Mm-hmm. We'll grab more tomorrow. Thank you. There's your Thank you. There's more for you. Oops. Mm. No, I'm good. Well, if we end up spending a rest day here tomorrow, and right now I hope we do, this is the place to spend it. This is amazing. Mm -hmm. And we've got our pads, and we're on some like spongy moss slash shrubs, and it's just extra comfy. And we skipped over on Babaka Bay today, and here's part of the reason why. We talked to some people who know the lake, and they said that on Babaka wasn't particularly scenic. But also, this whole area is a diverted watershed for hydro. So there are the dams here on the Nipigon River. They diverted, diverted all this water that used to flow down the Ogoki River, down the little jackfish. And this has created a lot of siltation in this bay, so the water's not that clear. And yeah, figured we could skip that and spend more time in other areas that we think are going to be quite nice. The woman found the blanket and pulled it up high enough to cover herself to the waist. Then raised one hand to push her hair back from her eye. Day 16 and we're wave bound as expected and it's supposed to get worse so yeah we're not going anywhere and that's kind of what we wanted today for a rest day. We'll have a little show with the waves but now tomorrow's forecast calls for up to 50 kilometer an hour winds which would be extremely dangerous to paddle in especially in an open canoe. Today would be very difficult 
but tomorrow impossible. So that is somewhat of a concern, especially because the following morning is also looking rough. So that could be three straight days where we struggle to make progress, if any, which for the first time on this trip makes me worry about us getting to the finish line in time. We've got a wedding to get back to. Aaron's in the bridal party, so we gotta get back. We're taking stock of what's left as well. We should be good for food for up to another week, but if, it, if we need an extra day or two, but not much longer than that. I'll be going for fish today. Hope we make that happen finally, a fish fry. It's not even 10.30 and it's already really kicked up over there. But we made a point of choosing a site that had a little leeward section for cooking and fishing, swimming, and even launching the canoe if we get a chance tomorrow. It's time to get a shore lunch, I hope. Got one. Thank you. Perfect eater walleye. Fantastic. Didn't take long. Jelly? So with rain threatening, I'm not gonna wait. This will be plenty. Erin's barely having any. She's actually vegetarian except for the odd little bit of fresh caught meat. But this will be my first meat all trip except for one freeze dried meal that had a little beef in it. So. So I've got the two fillets, two cheeks. You know, get a little extra meat out of the cheeks on walleye, and the pectoral fins as well. Walleye wings. Erin doesn't really like seafood, so she tries. Mm -hmm. It's good for me. They saved on the trip. Mm -hmm. I appreciate the nutrients. It's early afternoon and without a doubt we're going to be stuck here. It's not too bad around this point but this is the exposure and it's actually worse around the corner I'll show you. This is a bit of a glancing blow. And this is a 30 kilometer an hour wind. Tomorrow if it hits 50 in the afternoon as forecasted it's going to be exponentially worse. We're tucked away in here totally out of the wind. Back there it's quiet. You would hardly know what's going on. Well, you can hear the waves, but it's nothing like here. 
And the best show is around the corner here. Aaron's whipped up another batch of raspberry bannock and we're really enjoying this spot and we might be here for a while. Don't have the wind forecast for the third day from today but tomorrow and the following day look really really bad. Even if we can get out tomorrow morning we're not sure it's going to make sense because it'll get rough so fast and we have such a good spot for riding it out here. There's a chance we'll be here three full days but yeah. we'll have to play it by day by day. Even if we get a window tomorrow it's supposed to pick up so much that it might not be worth it. It might be dangerous to try and take advantage of that window and then get caught on it when yeah. it picks up. So yeah, tomorrow is be dangerous happening. So we'll see what comes. But the trip has a different vibe now. Supposed to be a clear night. This looks kind of ominous. Almost sunset and the wind just started raging. It was dying down and then suddenly it's just crazy. And there's this forest fire haze in the air too. And a little rain on the air. It feels nasty. Almost looks post-apocalyptic now. All right, we're getting to bed. We're getting the alarm set for 4.30 a.m., but I'm not too hopeful. We'll see what comes tomorrow morning. Day 17, we woke up at 4.30 and it was calm as expected and still is, but it's just the calm before the storm. So we've decided to stay put for the day rather than get a two or three hours of paddling in and then scramble to find something before this thing picks up, which is supposed to be pretty nasty according to our forecast. I'll show you what we're dealing with on the map. We're there and the south winds are making progress impossible because of not just a headwind, but also these points, which are very exposed and present a real danger for an open canoe or most vessels, especially today. And then tomorrow the forecast calls for nearly 50 kilometer an hour winds again, which is crazy to have that back to back. Going down this way, which is still gonna make this point at least perilous. Livingston Point, I think it's called. Livingstone Point. So, we're probably going to be here the next two days, but at least we're in a great position and an enjoyable position. But after that, we're going to have to put in some big days to get back to our endpoint there. Another reason this is a good campsite to stay at. Whoa! <laughs> I think it was a pike. Big jump. Piker jumpers in this lake, but yeah, good good fishing spot for 
for shore fishing. Especially when it's calm like this and I can go out on this exposed rock. I'm looking for a trout today. Brook trout have to be at least, I think, 53 centimeters on Nipigon, same as Superior, to keep one. So that's enormous, half over half a meter long. I'm not going to keep a brook trout that big, so I'm looking for a lake trout. Oh, oh just came off. That's, that works well. I think you got to look and a quick clean release. Pretty similar pike to the ones I've been catching. Not that long, but pretty thick. I'm gonna work this south facing shore while I can. It's gonna be crazy later. It's morning 17 and we still have a little bit of cheese left. I think it's on borrowed time and I'm not going to look too closely or smell it too closely, <laughs> but I think it's still pretty good. Uh, and we're going to throw it in our chili. And, yeah, it's quite a bit. That was a good helping. Yeah, and enjoy it with chili this morning. This is our longest trip, so it's the longest we've ever tried to stretch cheese. We're thankful for it this morning. been a slow build today with the wind the forecast the wind kept getting pushed further and further into the day but it looks like it's finally ramping up chocolates tonight. We've been saving them for a chilly, nasty evening like this. Backpacking meal and we're ready for a show.
back in the tent with the thunderstorm and there's a weird thrumming sound. It sounds like the, the earth is vibrating. It's a little bit alarming, but exciting. Turning into quite a sunset. One of the best sunsets I've ever seen. Especially with the waves, it's just such a dramatic scene. Day 18 and we're windbound again. There was no question about that. The waves raged all night, so we knew that we were not moving today. And our sheltered little cove where we've been cooking, keeping the canoe, is almost underwater today. So luckily we had the sense to move it yesterday. Exposed rock and beaches are rarely safe from the waves. We knew about Nipigon's Wrath coming into this trip and we budgeted three to five days out of our plan 21 to be off the water because of conditions. And this is now the fifth day one thunderstorm and four wave bound days. So we've maxed out that allowance now and if things don't improve, I'm worried that we're not gonna be able to do this. In the forecast for tomorrow, there looks like there'll be a paddling window in the morning before it gets rough yet again. So we're not going anywhere too fast too soon. Here's our little oasis out of the wind. It's amazing how much one line of trees can do to cut the wind, like a rock in a river creating an eddy. And then right here, it's just wicked. live on Lake Superior and we've seen bigger than this but this is certainly a storm worthy of Great Lakes.
overcast and really windy day, so hoping this will warm our spirits a little bit. Winding down day 18 here, and it's really hard to believe that we've been here for four nights tomorrow morning. And we're so eager to get going. We've got an alarm set for 440. We hope to be on the water at first light if it's calm enough. It's just a blur the last few days. Five forty-five, and we're ready to go. Just gonna wait a little bit longer for just a, a little bit of first light, because it's still too dark to see rocks or anything like that. So, but at least it's calm. We got our game faces on, and we're ready to put in a big day if the wind allows us to. There are a handful of nav beacons on Nipigan. You can see one in the distance there flashing. Shaping up to be a beautiful morning and what a night too. Sunset and then I got in the tent and a bat was flying around the tent above us. Left the fly door open. I rarely see bats. Stars came out and northern lights. The one thing I wanted left on this trip to really complete it. So all, all that's left to complete this trip is to complete it. <laughs> it's a duck. Yeah. <laughs> so nice to have calm and silence out here after three straight days of that roar. We're about to make this four kilometer crossing across Humboldt Bay. And I think we have about 100 kilometers left on our route, which is like three good travel days. But what we were really, we're really hoping for is a good sailing day at some point and we could make up a ton of ground at that point. But it's supposed to get windy again later today and possibly tomorrow as well. It could even be another wave bound day. So. Gonna make this crossing and keep motoring along. We're done the crossing, we're at Livingstone Point Provincial Nature Reserve, and the wind isn't doing us any favors, so it looks like it's probably not gonna be the big day we hope for, but we'll see what we can do. so far a lot of big swallows out on the lake we got into a bit of a rough situation around Livingstone Point but at this point in the trip with still so many kilometers left to go we really have to try and balance keeping safe with also progressing when we can so we're kind of contemplating hoping to make a couple more kilometers today but not sure if we'll be able to manage it or if we're gonna have to call it an early day. It's 
been a long day, but we're finally behind Mungo Park Point, which is providing a nice bit of shelter here. And we're hoping to, uh, to camp at the end of that point. I'm so gassed. I had three hours of sleep between the Aurora early rise and just insomnia. So, oh, I can't wait to get there. Just hammered out 40 kilometers into a headwind and then collapsed here and the gear bomb exploded. We've got electrolyte, water, dehydrated pineapple, and cashews. Basically didn't stop. We just took two pee breaks and that was it. Snack bars and wraps. So here's a look at home for tonight and very likely tomorrow night as well. As you can see, this area burnt and I believe this is part of the big 1999 fire just about 25 years ago. There's this long channel between the island and mainland. And an incredible view. That's north there, so we'll be keeping an eye out for more northern lights. It's the most established campsite, I would say, on this trip. Aside from that one other, I don't know, maybe day seven or something we stayed at. And we're supposed to have a big wind from the south again tomorrow. So, yeah, we might be stuck here, but it'd be a great place to swim, clean ourselves up, get some more juice over there with the solar panel, and rest after a big day. Penne with rehydrated sauce and veggies tonight, and the last of the Parmesan. So here's where we're at on the map. Came around the South Peninsula, crossed over, around Livingstone, and up into this burnt area to there. Tomorrow, 30 kilometer an hour south winds, but then the next day it's supposed to be a pretty strong north wind, so we're hoping we make good progress down the coast and it's not too strong, and then that would get us uh, within striking distance of the car. Day 20, and for the fourth time in five days, we're wave bound. It's not bad here, we're on the leeward side, but we can hear it crashing over there and the wind's strong, so. We had a big day yesterday. Tomorrow looks like it'll be a big day as well, so it's not such a bad day for a rest day. And we've got a view worthy of the Great Lakes, and yet another really interesting site to explore. So we're camped there just around the corner. Gonna do a little shore fishing today, hopefully get that lake trout I didn't get the other day. And the spot I came, 
has a fish here, a burbot. Looks like something's been eating it, probably an eagle. So hopefully that's a good omen for me. No luck. Unfortunately, it's too shallow along the shore here. The rock slopes really slowly out, so I can't get my lure deep. Normally I would cast out a heavy spoon or something like that, let it fall deep to get to where the lakers are, but can't do that here, but that's all right. We've got the last ration of bannock along with some chili, so that'll be good. Then we're gonna go for a hike around the island. been a great hike. There's so much going on in these rocks and the crevices and splash pools, little flowers. And we've got to the south end of the island. It's a pretty long island. And the waves aren't too bad today, but there's a strong headwind. Tomorrow we should have a good tailwind, so we'll take advantage of that. can't believe it, but we just found some more survey monuments. This one is federal from 1959. This one's provincial from the Gravity Base Station. That's interesting. Departments of Mines and Northern Affairs, Toronto. back to camp. The east shore of the island turned out to be pretty much a bushwhack, so we're ready for a swim. walk today we gathered some rose hips we're gonna make some tea so put them in the pot and boil them up for about 10 minutes and see how it tastes yeah this is the fruit of the wild, of wild rose plant it comes after the flower I'm not sure if this is the right ratio of rose hips to water but anyway we'll see what it's like it's a good source of vitamin C apparently cheers to day 20 day 20 Pretty mild and bland as expected. Maybe we need more, or maybe it's just not late enough in the season. The vitamin C should be there though. Yeah. Take it. There's not a ton of stuff left in the food barrel, enough for three or four more days, but we do have a good amount of sugar left, so that'll fix this up. We're also gonna throw in some mint tea <laughs> bags. <laughs> Take this into a real tea. It was pretty bland. There was nothing there. Wild yeah. edible teas like cedar, spruce, pine, and all that. They usually, in my opinion, can't compete with <laughs> just an Earl Grey or a mint. I do like um, spruce and cedar quite I li a bit. I like them, but I still like these yeah. teas better. But it's nice to get those vitamins if mm -hmm. you need them. 20 days and we're starting to long for home a little bit. Not terribly, I'm still really happy. We're still really happy to be out here. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it's getting to that point. What are you missing most right now? The cats. The cats. And then... And then what comfort? Well, we were just talking about good meals, so it's between mm. that and a shower and clean laundry. Mm, yeah, yeah. I'd probably say laundry. Yeah. Being able to launder clothes really well. That's the one thing I miss out here the most. And yeah, the food. Food a day. fridge full of fresh food, a produce actually, yeah, produce. produce would be up there, since we got so few blueberries, yeah. raspberries. If there's a chance we can put in a huge day tomorrow, like 50 kilometers maybe, if the wind is in our favor, but we're not holding our breath on that. We haven't got that much sailing in so far, maybe 30, 30 kilometers yeah. of the 300 and, and 
whatever we're at. Piece together here and there, yeah. We thought it'd be a lot more. Yeah. So, yeah. Get, yeah, if we can get we'll a big day that. tomorrow, that would be the nice. most. The longest sail we had was about a week ago, maybe, coming out of Windigo Bay. That was five kilometers that we got out of that. It's really nice, but yeah, we expected some 40 kilometer sailing days, a couple of them here and there, and we have not had that at all. It's been all paddles. Yeah. Last cast here, no fish unless I get one right now. Unfortunately, I really wanted one, craving something rich and fatty. Our food is so lean, but two or three days away from being able to satisfy all my cravings. Tomorrow morning, we'll be heading down this channel and south, hopefully toward a big progress day. And I'll give you a look on the map. So we're camped on that island and the channel's right in between there and the mainland. Tomorrow we're hoping to continue down to perhaps the Blackwater River and even further into this area if we get really lucky, but that's like a 50 kilometer day. There are a couple of outs before our exit. There's a municipal campground there, a small campground. We could exit there or down here in Orient Bay. However, that would be really dissatisfying to be so close. And once we get down to here, we have two options to either come through there or up on top. So that really helps with respect to wind. We could tuck away in here if need be. So that's basically the home stretch. And some popcorn will tide me over for tonight. Let's do this. Yeah. Oh, sorry. <laughs> All right, here we go at first light, down the channel. The clouds up top this morning here when they're in that nice wavy kind of pattern it always reminded me of something i can never figure it out but this morning it hit me it reminds me of sand under on a beach under the water just flowing nicely same pattern it's the same pattern it's kind of beautiful symmetry mm -hmm. and here comes the sun Swells have built as we carried on this morning, so we're gonna try and just get past this next point and hopefully tuck into a bay. The wind's supposed to die as the day goes on, so we might have to wait it out a little bit. We've tucked into this bay. We're gonna put our dry suits on and try and get a little bit further. It's the swells are big but manageable, they're not breaking yet. So um, with our dry suits, we'll see if we can get a little bit more progress in.
day on this lake. We thought we might have a nice easy day and the begin said not so fast. Obviously it's a lake that's better suited to sea kayaks and canoes with spray deck but we're able to, to use our experience to get through this but a, a spray deck would be nice right now that's for sure. Got into a calmer spot getting a bit of sailing in here. making much better progress now, about 26 kilometers into our day and passing Poplar Lodge Park over there. I came here, this is my first dose of Nipigon that I ever got. It was a little over a decade ago. I was road tripping in my minivan and I looked out on this lake and I was obviously inspired. And I'd like to say that in that moment I dreamt about paddling around it someday, but at that time I never even dreamt I could do that. So pretty cool to be back here, almost all the way around it. Big dents in our day, stopping for some tea, coffee, snacks. We just put in six hours straight of paddling without even peeing. Somehow we just didn't have to. It's not like we were holding it, but we're just motivated. We're back on our way, we got about 15 kilometers left to hit the 50 kilometer mark. Hoping to get to there and then we can get home tomorrow almost for sure. So just into view is Otter Head, which is one of the features that we saw in our first bay on day one. And for so much of the trip recently, we've been looking back at the landmarks that we passed and to come full circle and be looking forward to stuff and being a trip is pretty cool. Kind of surreal, makes it set in that we're getting close. The lake really settled down after our lunch break, which is really appreciated because we're coming up to the mouth of Pidgetawabic Bay. So it's nice and calm here for that crossing and we've blown by all of this, which is a good, a good place to blow by, I suppose, if any on the lake because it's got a bit of development, a few motorboats, and this forest fire runs all along here. So it's thick bush. We could have put in 40 to 50 kilometer days like this probably several times on this trip, but we've seen, we've passed so much on this, on this day, but we've seen and experienced much less than normal. Also because of the waves and for the first 30 kilometers just didn't allow us to get into shore, but yeah, we're trying to head over here and camp for the night. I am losing steam. Here it is, another beach camp for the final night. Hard to believe that we're almost there. Gonna be in the hammocks tonight. We haven't done a ton of hammocking, so that'll be nice. And we'll be looking out at this view with sunset. It's supposed to go down somewhere over there. Pretty good. It's fitting that I'm just finishing this book here on our last night. And in the last chapter, Nancy Scott says, Lake Nipigon remains a pristine and undeveloped wilderness lake, a place of grandeur, mystery, and intrigue. That it has stayed in such a wild state is indeed remarkable. And that is so true, I can't believe that 
we spent 20 days up until today we barely saw a soul on a lake with no portages to get to and she closes with it can only be hoped that long into the future the glory of Nipkin will be treasured appreciated and protected as the spectacular wilderness lake that it is and may Lake Nipigan always remain that iconic, wild, near pristine body of water befitting its unique setting in the geography of Canada, that special place where the Great Lakes begin. So here's where we stand after day 21. So we did a little over 50 kilometers today, which puts us over 400 kilometers for the trip. And just a few days ago, when we had spent four nights in that one spot, I was really thinking that there was a very good chance we were gonna have to take out at that campground we passed today. So, thrilled to be here. Took a couple big days, 40 kilometers, two days ago, biting through the headwind. And today, pushing through, we had a tailwind, but pushing through some nasty conditions. So, feels amazing to be here. We're rehydrating some well-deserved sweet potato masala and the cravings are hitting harder and harder every day. Today we said milkshake. I wanted a lemon custard for some reason. I don't even know if I've ever You're not had even a one. Sweet person. No. Typically. Yeah, burger. Oh. Poutine. Can't, can't wait for tomorrow to satisfy those cravings. But we're planning to go to this diner, which we lovingly refer to as the Krabby Duck. Long story short, we went there after our last Superior trip. I couldn't remember the name of it, so I called it the Krabby Duck. It's called Duckies. And we went there, had a wonderful meal after our trip, and we've been looking forward to it this whole time. Earlier, about 10 days ago, let's say, I started thinking about that, and I just randomly sang out a, a verse of a song, started a song. I said, the Krabby Duck is a Krabby Duck. And I paused and started, tried to think of something else. That was a nonsensical start to the song. And then I said, it'll fill our belly soon. And we just sort of built off of that over the course of that day. She wrote a couple lines, I wrote a couple lines, and then she finished it with a couple more. So without further ado, <laughs> after dinner, we've got a little performance for you. So grab a duck. It's really an ode to all the greasy spoons out there. Yeah, exactly. And it's possibly the most annoying earworm since Baby Shark. <laughs> and or the song that never ends. <laughs> yeah. Our generation's Baby Shark. <laughs> We've got a beautiful sun dog just in time for dinner. One, two, three. The crabby duck is a crabby duck, it'll fill our belly soon. For 21 days we've been paddling hard, craving that greasy spoon. I got a rumbly in my tumbly, I can eat for a platoon. As the miles pass by our hunger grows, we sing this paddler's tune. Watching the sun go down here on our final night on Nipigan. Unbelievable trip, trip of a lifetime in so many ways and something we'll remember forever. So many different things. I'm thinking about the birds. There are a bunch of gulls in front of us here. We saw pelicans, swans, eagles, herons, 
Peregrine Falcon. Peregrine Falcon, Echo Merlin, Rock. Yeah, countless just, others. Countless, and it was super fun just watching and looking out for them, listening to them. Yeah. Yeah, they were a big part of the trip. Always, always putting on a show throughout. And then the weather and skies, fantastic weather. Unbelievably good. We only had one like fully overcast day and I don't think it even rained that day. Mostly no. the rain came and went. And then the only real challenge was in this last week, the wind and waves, especially pinning us down at that one site, but couldn't complain about the weather on this trip. Then there were thunderstorms, yeah. which we love. Just like the wavy days, we just love being in the power of nature. And we got several I don't know, the first week or two we had half a dozen thunderstorms at least. They were rolling in kind of in the afternoons, we'd have a warmer humid day and then as the kind of afternoon rolled in we'd get a bit of a squall and a thunderstorm. Yep. It was fun. And there was a forest fire haze adding to the atmosphere sometimes, making for some beautiful sunrises and sunsets. And we saw maybe our best sunset ever. Yeah. That wavy day, the clouds were mountainous and so red and pink, it was amazing. And then Northern Lights. Yeah. We got Northern Lights. Uh, one mediocre showing and then one pretty good one. So. Mm -hmm. And yeah. the meteor shower. Yeah, the meteor shower yeah. and just stargazing in general. And then there were the fish. Didn't get as much as I wanted to, but still, we got uh, a walleye fish fry. We got some pike. You got that one nice walleye. Yeah. And I caught the biggest brook trout of my life, but didn't document it well. Let it slip through oh, your well. nets. Yeah. <laughs> And we got, there was that big pike that was oh, yeah. nibbling early on too. Didn't get him on the line, but. Yeah, he was short biting my paddle tail. It was that close. Yeah, got a good sight of it. So yeah. yeah, that was fun. And then of course there's the scenery, beaches everywhere. Campsites were fantastic, despite that maybe some are messed up because of the damming or forest fires, but we still found so many unique and fantastic campsites. Mm -hmm. Lots of cliffs and just the overall landscape and scenery was so diverse day to day. Yeah, it's yeah. hard to believe it was all on one lake. Yeah, you think about Windigo Bay and that yeah. huge shallow wetland yeah. <laughs> and then Mount St. John and Echo Rock and uh, white wetlands. Sand. Yeah, the White Sand yeah. River. We got into some rivers and creeks as well, which was like a nice change of pace. Early on, it seems, it's hard to even remember, but there was <laughs> Grand Cape. That was gorgeous and uh, Chiatang Bluffs. Yep. Barn Islands, can't forget oh, them. Oh yeah, <laughs> we had a good view of them for probably a week. Yeah, 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 they were always on the horizon somewhere for quite a while. That was cool. And then you can't forget the wildflowers either. We saw so many and just a beautiful burst of color everywhere, everywhere you go. Yeah. And the wildlife didn't disappoint. We thought it might be initially because we were well into the trip and all we had seen was a small black bear at camp, which was just gone too fast to get any footage. But then we got to the north end of the lake, more remote end, and things started happening. But that amazing encounter with the black bear just mm -hmm. let us watch him forever. Yeah, and he just went about his business, unfazed by us. Yeah. And then the magic happened, the caribou. Caribou. Oh, unforgettable part of our lives for sure. I can't believe, yeah, just so incredible to, yeah, just yeah. have that experience to have seen one. That was a pipe dream to experience yeah. that on this trip and it actually happened, so yeah. that's crazy. And then those couple of moose bobbing up and down, bobbing for apples, it <laughs> looked like. I can say that I've, in my lifetime, plenty of times mistaken rocks for moose. Yeah. That's the first time I've mistaken moose for rocks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and plenty of other stuff like otters. Um, yeah, that's small stuff. beaver, yeah, mink, mm -hmm. yeah. Overall, I feel like we played our cards pretty well on this trip and it was executed nicely. Didn't forget anything or wish, there was nothing really that we wish we had except maybe the trail cam. If anything, yeah. I would consider bringing it and left it at home. So maybe would have caught that animal yeah, on but the camera, but. No, other than that, it was like, I can't believe how for a three week trip that we, there was nothing major that we, we no. missed or, you know, oversights or anything like that. No. The only thing we wish we had were blueberries. We've said that a lot of times yeah. on this trip, so won't belabor the point any further. But some fresh food's gonna be really appreciated tomorrow. So final thoughts on Lake Nipigon. It's been an incredible trip. And for me, even sitting here on day 21 this evening, I definitely thought at this point I would be aching for home a lot more. It was the lo longest trip by far that we've done, most distance we've covered, and that stand out to me is that I'm just 
I'm ready. It'll be nice to be home, but I'm not eager to mm. be getting home. I'm not missing things as much as I thought I would. Like it's yeah. really felt in comparison to other trips, doing such a long one has felt less like a, a trip where we're going from point A to point B and almost more like we're just coming and living out here for mm. a couple, you know, like three weeks at a time or it, it didn't have that same beginning and end feeling throughout. It was just, oh, we're just out here, living out here, mm -hmm. paddling, exploring the lake. And, uh, and that's pretty cool to feel just so at home at and home, yeah. enjoy it so much. Yep. And then I'm, I'm shocked how few people we saw, how remote the, this lake, parts of this lake are with no portages. And I think I said earlier in this trip, I described it as a masterpiece of a lake. <laughs> it really is. All the islands, so much wildlife, the fishing potential. Yeah, it's, it's a very special place. And the last time I was here, last fall, just got a taste of the lake and I said it reminds me of Superior more than any other lake which is the highest compliment I can give and I feel that even more so now. So yeah, Nipigan in our hearts forever. Spectacular. What a trip. Packing up here before first light, got 25, maybe 30 kilometers to go to the car, and then we're out of here. It's a chilly one, we got tea from the thermos, and we're raring to go. We're now at the start of the Nipigon River, where all of the water from this lake rushes out, just like us. We're rushing out of this lake, down the Nipigon River, along the highway that runs there. Lake Nipigon has been called many things, including the Sixth Great Lake, which I think is quite warranted, or the First Great Lake, because it's the first in the hydrology. Everything from here runs down through the Great Lakes. It's also referred to as the headwaters of the Great Lakes for the same reason. But we've kind of latched onto the concept and the idea of it being the mother of the Great Lakes. Think about the lake, we've just paddled around and looking at the river here where it all drains. It's Lake Superior's biggest tributary. So in a sense, Nipigon gives birth to these waters. They travel down the river as children, out to the Great Lakes for their adolescence, out the St. Lawrence River, where I guess they become adults in the Atlantic. And they evaporate back up into the sky, go to Lake Heaven, and then eventually rain down to replenish the cycle. I've already come up with new uses for my pony hole. Now my rabbit tail. Really enjoying this thing, eh? <laughs> Possibilities are endless. Making good progress now. We're about 26 kilometers into our day, passing Pobler Lur. <laughs> we're finally through the forest fire. The last day and a half we were, or not day and a half, last. 
I'm saying goodbye to an old friend today. This is my seventh season with this shirt. It's my favorite shirt. It's becoming quite threadbare. It's torn, the buttons don't hold anymore. Today is its last day. So say goodbye, folks. Morning. It's a beautiful day. Something we learned on this trip. <laughs> the drone is a very good bellows. Really gets the coals going. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> One, two, three. The crabby duck is a crabby duck. It'll fill our belly soon. For 21 days we've been paddling hard. Craving that greasy spoon. I got a rumbly in my tumbly. I can eat for a platoon. As the miles pass by, our hunger grows. We sing this paddler's tune.